Well, hello there, cuties. It's your host of a comedy advice podcast, Stefan Satani, coming in with nothing but good vibes. I feel like I'm having a good hair day and I want to excrete nothing but positivity. So I hope my excretion is contagious and you guys are just getting a big old whiff of it being like, oh, it smells good. I want a good day and I'm going to have a good day. Well, hey, welcome. If I haven't scared you off yet, thank you for staying aboard and not jumping ship so early. I mean, this has just gotten started. We haven't even served drinks yet. You haven't even seen what your entertainment is. And speaking of entertainment, I have a very special guest for this episode. It's Brent Pella, internet sensation. He was also on season 16 of Nick Cannon's Wild and Out. And I have never seen that show before. I interviewed Brent, but I ended up watching some episodes and it is awesome. 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 And it's a really cool set. It kind of looks like a, a Mad Max meets Stomp the Yard. And it's just really quick, really funny. And I recommend watching it. So I think you need Paramount Plus streaming if you do. Link is in the show notes. I'm now an affiliate partner with Paramount Plus. No, I'm not. But, you know, I can try and do what I can. Pull some strings for you if you guys need the hookup. I will stream my Paramount Plus. I don't have Paramount Plus. I got a free trial. Mm, is this? Oh, God. Sorry, Paramount Plus. I hope you're not listening. PP. Oh, man. What a bad acronym. You guys couldn't do like Paramount Max. You got to go with the PP, huh? Anyway, speaking of PP, I'm going to keep streaming on. And speaking of streaming, you can stream Brent. Did you see how I was struggling for that one? Yeah, that was grasping at streams, really. And uh, he's also, he does some great impressions of Joe Rogan. He's all across his Instagram page and YouTube and Facebook. So follow him. The links are in the show notes. See him. And then Phoenicians. <laughs> alert Phoenicians. Brent is actually going to be it. Yep. Tag, he's yet. No, he's actually going to be at the Tempe Improv October 7th. Link in the, is in the show notes there. So take those hungry little thumbs that are just hungry for links <laughs> and click and, and consume that link. Buy those tickets. Go see him October 7th, Tempe Improv. And I know that after all that thumbing, I know what you're thinking, guys. My thumbs are still going to be hungry. They need more links to eat. <laughs> Guess what? I'm going to have more. If you guys haven't yet, please subscribe to the podcast, leave a review, follow me on Instagram. And guess what? Facebook group is now activated and I am engaged. And if you guys want to go over there, I do Facebook lives every Thursday at six o'clock Pacific time and nine o'clock Eastern time. And it's going to be me and you and all of the people. I did a test run yesterday and it was so much fun. Everybody was jolly and jovial and we had a, a lot of fun. We answered some questions together. So join that group. I'll have that link in the show notes as well for your hungry thumbs. And oh, to, for dessert, Trash or Treasure, my new show. The first one was a success. So we got another one, another one at the House of Comedy, October 19th, Tuesday. So Phoenicians, I don't know like what a good call is for Phoenicians. Maybe a because it's the scorpion sting just really quickly. It's tail. And you guys are all swift. We know that. I've seen you guys on the 101 driving 90 and a 65. That's just how we roll, isn't it? I do it too. I'm not going to deny. Although unless police use this for evidence, I don't. I drive under the speed limit. Anyway, October 19th, link is going to be in the show notes. It's going to be a tournament where comedians are going to battle it out. We're going to give them topics and they are going to have to argue whether they're trash or treasure and the audience decides who wins. It's going to be like a modern day gladiator. Except no Russell Crowe. I tried. He's not going to show up. So go to that. And I think that's it, guys. So I'm just going to let this one roll into the episode. By the way, I should just give a little bit of a warning. My internet, Cox internet, actually, for the whole neighborhood was pretty much down during this episode filming. So Brent did freeze a couple times. It was my fault. I added some special effects for you YouTube watchers and some sound effects for you listeners so i hope you guys enjoy and i hope you don't complain because like a karen because it's free you know so if you don't like it i don't want to hear about it i'm gonna be a great parent aren't i yes i am all right children here goes the episode there it goes hi what's up dude 
Hey, man. Doing well. How are you? Good morning. Good. Yeah, good morning, bro. Uh, th- thank you so much for agreeing to do an 8 a.m. podcast. Hey, yeah, no, it's good. Any <laughs> any opportunity I have to wake up at a reasonable time, I try to take. I tr- I'm trying to wake up at 8 a.m. anyways because I usually go to bed at midnight. So, oh it man, works. so that's that's a healthy amount of sleep. I feel like you can get those REM cycles in. So, that's yeah, you would hope, pretty- uh, depending on how crazy the day was. But yeah. <laughs> That's true. That's true. And you have, um, I don't see natural light, but I do see the artificial yellow or the purple neon light, which is oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, I got a window over here. Um, okay. This, this is, uh, that painting I actually got for free. It was, I, I, I hosted a comedy show at an art gallery a couple of years ago. And instead of paying us, they just had to choose a, a painting, choose a print. And so I, and I saw this big ass <laughs> wolf. And uh, I said, oh, well, I have to have that giant wolf, of course. <laughs> oh, man. Has it been uh, evaluated? Is it at a high price? Or do you know? Uh, Is it? I, it's a print. So it's not as expensive as the original, of course. But I think they okay. were selling it online for 800 Something like that. So <laughs> I mean, hey. $800 wolf? I'll say no more. Uh, I'm, I'm in for an $800 wolf. Man. That's pretty cool. Oh man, that absolutely. And it looks yeah. like it earned every dollar because the details yeah. are great. It looks like it's kind of looking at you right now as if you're prey. And uh, <laughs> I'm, I was a little afraid for you at first, but I'm super <laughs> excited. And speaking of $800 wolves, we've got an $800 wolf of an episode here at cool. a comedy advice podcast. Um, I'm Stefan Satani, your host. And um, joining today, we're just hopping right into it as a wolf would into its prey. Um, <laughs> special guest here, comedian, producer, influencer, and uh, he, he made his debut in um, Rite of Passage. Everybody, please welcome Brent Pella. Clap, 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 clap. Oh, clap, no, clap. Stefan, it I pro- froze. Oh, no. Ah. Oh, I'm sorry. Is is it thawing out? Now it's a little choppy. Now you're good. Oh, man. Sometimes my internet does try to humble me if I'm trying to go too long <laughs> on the intros. It'll just be like, hey, can you just keep it brief? Yeah, keep it no short. <laughs> no worry. <laughs> oh, man. But Brent Pella, welcome to the show. Super excited to have you. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, happy to join. Happy to make a new friend. What's going on? Oh, man. Maybe we could have two in this little wolf pack of ours. But Brent, <laughs> super, <laughs> super pumped to have you on. And um, very excited. I've been following you for a while, which sounds oh, thank you, probably man. as as creepy as it is, but <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember where I first discovered you. It was definitely on Instagram. I think maybe it was an impression where you were doing a video being Joe Rogan, which I thought sure. was absolutely hilarious. And sometimes I've been listening to the Brent Pella show, which is uh, your podcast where nice. I think yeah, you're on yeah. episode 79 or so you've had some i don't know i forget all of them <laughs> every, week, I, every week i forget what number i'm on and i just make one up and it's always wrong I'm like, uh, 72 it's like 78 <laughs> I, I, I think on the last episode that you had it was like yeah we're on episode 70 fucking something i don't know so it's, uh, it's great you know it just shows time flies when you're having fun which is True. is fantastic yep. but um i I know that I know that early in your life the the dream wasn't necessarily to be what you're doing right now. I mean, you're on you were on um, uh, Nick Cannon's Wild and Out season yeah. sixteen, and I just heard also going to be in season seventeen, which you guys are either filming or starting to film, which yeah, is awesome. Yeah. I'm very excited. Thank you, man. Yeah, that'll be in season sixteen. We shot down in Southern California, about an hour outside of LA, at a soundstage. And season 17, which they just invited me back for, will be shot in New Jersey. So uh, I'm heading out there for almost the whole month of October. And I'm super stoked. That show is so fun. And everybody that's on it and a part of it is like a dream to work with. It's really cool. It is super cool. And I have to admit, I had not seen Wild and Out season 1 through 15. So 16. <laughs> was just a delight i don't i was more like not wild and out i was tame and inside and then i felt it's almost like whose line is it anyway but 
the people yeah. that are cool are on it. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it was really cool to see and just seeing how you guys are just on the fly with your your baby mama, your baby daddy. Uh, that segment is hilarious. The back of my car, like all these different segments where you guys are just flying back and forth. It's electric. It really is wild and out. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The show, I, I love the show because the style of comedy that they kind of foster there is very silly. It's very fast paced, punchline oriented, get in and get out quick jokes, um, which is a challenge for a writer, you know, cause a comedy writer would typically, depending on the type of writing you're doing, but typically, you know, if you, I, I come from the sketch and character world. So I got to like tell a story for 30 seconds before I get to like the big uh, beat of what is happening in the scene. But this show is like, no, you don't have 30 seconds. You got 10 seconds, maybe total. <laughs> so it's, it's super challenging. You got to filter down the words and um, deliver the joke as fast and punchy as you can, which was awesome. It, it was a really cool from like a comedy nerd perspective. It was a really cool challenge to go through that whole process. And you know what, as an audience member, I, I thought you did a fantastic job. I was sitting okay. on the edge of my, yeah, absolutely. I was sitting on the edge of my seat thinking like, okay, what's what's he gonna say? What's gonna pop out of that mouth? And it was just fantastic. So um, it, it's a really cool show to see. And and I was engaged the whole time. And then they, the the, the whole, the way they set it up too is, is really cool. Um, it's not like a standard stage. They've got cars or they've got um, oh, dude, just wild. random things in there. Yeah, it was. Um, so we shot in a COVID bubble because they had they had all these crazy COVID rules. Uh, so we had everybody would get tested every other day and they actually didn't have uh, a live audience. They had maybe 50 people in the soundstage and those 50 people were with us for every day of filming. So they didn't like usually they'll have a couple hundred people in there and it's like a comedy club type party type vibe. Um, but they couldn't do that because of the COVID business uh so we had and it all trickled down from nick the the show works and is amazing because of nick cannon everything trickles down from his, his mind and he had the concept of turning the set into this crazy like dystopian mad max scene and so you got people sitting in cars and convertibles and and old messed up jeeps um and man it was the coolest like production I've ever been a part of. And when you see it on TV, it looks like a giant futuristic, like wasteland of, of an event. Yes. Um, and man, it was rad. It's, it's super cool. That's really cool. I hope just thinking of the frequent testing and I know that actors and people that are um, in for entertainment, they have to get tested all the time. I don't know if it's still the, the nose probe or not, but it that's... is it's the worst thing uh, in the world. It's a seven to seven foot, fucking q-tip that goes up and it massages the back of your eye and then they take it out but they make sure it gets in there first i think i have holes in my brain from it i i hate it so much. Oh, God. i had to uh i had to do some at the cvs and you do it yourself but they're watching you so they're like uh, deeper and i'm like no uh, no and they're like deeper uh, deeper and then my eye finally just pops out of the socket a little bit and they're like that's yeah. it that's the last yeah thing. it's it's so uncomfortable but oh god price we pay to tell some jokes i guess that's true that's true i i hope that down the line it's gonna be like uh, did you use a lot of cocaine or did you just get tested right, a lot for right. covid <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Of <laughs> but it, it's so cool to see all of uh, you're doing with nick cannon's wild and out also the sketches that you're doing are hilarious i just saw the most recent one with dj diesel where you and oh my gosh I yeah you, you guys are aspiring djs and you went and just snuck into his trailer to um give him some samples of your beats and um yeah. and, and then also talking about music festivals which i actually just heard you frequent a lot of music or transformation festivals which yeah, I, yeah. I thought was <laughs> interesting kind of cool that you're taking it from your your true life experiences yeah you know uh the shack video was awesome so here's a fun story yeah uh, the the scene that we shot with shaquille o'neal was entirely improvised we barely had time to pitch him the concept i, ha I have a couple of mutual friends that work with shack in his music uh, side of things. And we were going to be at this music festival at the same time as them shooting a video. 
So um, I kind of tailored the concept of the video to fit Shaq. And we rushed back to the VIP area when they arrived. And they said like, yo, we got like 10 minutes. We're just hanging. And I pitched them the idea. And immediately Shaq was like, all right, cool. Let's do it. No, <laughs> no time to run lines. No time to give, feed him things I wanted him to say. I gave him the general outline that me and my buddy, Blake Weber, we're going to walk into the trailer, pitch him our demo, uh, do it acapella because the Wi-Fi went out and then he's going to think it's terrible and kick us out. That's all he had. Right. And so when you watch the video, he's like, he's in, he's, he's locked in. We're improvising every line, every word. And he's like doing the beat back to us, like, like as we're going. And then at the end, he has his lines and anybody listening to this, you got to go watch it because it's hilarious, but he improvised the whole thing. And then we, so we're just improvising back with him and it turned out better than anything that I had written. Um, and what's funny about that is that scene was fully improvised. And I remember when I first started doing improv, I was, uh, so scared and nervous that I wouldn't even step out onto the stage during the drills and during the scenes, um, oh, no at the improv workshops I was taking in LA. And so years later to be doing like a on camera, I thought was pretty cool. So I, I was, I was really happy with how that one came out. Thank you for also adding the detail that it was Shaquille O'Neal. Cause I just called him DJ diesel. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was so good, by the way. Uh, and it's so funny to know that it was all improv on his part where he was getting yeah. into it with you guys because that was one of the funniest parts for me. I thought the thing was delicious and hilarious all the way around. Um, Thank there you. Were the, yeah, so it was uh, absolutely hilarious, but it was really cool to hear uh, behind the scenes of how he was just like, hey, let's do it. And then yeah. it ended up delicious. So. Yeah. Yeah, I ended up great. And and uh I mean he's he's just so funny, just naturally funny and friendly and, and down to mess around and be silly. Um, so it was a blast, man. Yeah, that was really cool. That that's great. That's great. And then um just to I was also watching one of your other recent videos talking about music festivals and yeah. uh funny enough, I am from very very close to Sedona. So Oh, hilarious. Yeah. Yes, so you get it. Yes. You get those people. <laughs> oh, oh, I get it. I get it. My other room is filled with filled with gems and crystals and things yeah. to help give me. I good mean, energy. yeah, I, I I look over here. I got like four organic candles. You know, I got two pieces of sage, incense, a Himalayan salt lamp, and a few crystals. <laughs> so I'm definitely that guy. But what I love making fun of that guy, and I think I can because Same. I am that guy. You know, um, and the music. This is this has been like the summer of music festival content for me it's it's been really fun uh but it's been a lot of a lot of music festival stuff which i love because then we get to go to music festivals that's really cool and i i um i so i'm gonna admit this i have never been to a music festival so mm -hmm. i don't know what it's like and i know you met your girlfriend through a music festival which sounds in my eyes it just i, I it feels like mad max scene everybody just <laughs> <laughs> partying dancing on drugs or whatever and then you and girl lock eyes and you guys just well, it gravitate was, it was towards close. each other I, I don't know i don't know where you where you heard we met at a music we've been to music festivals we met at a at a house party in la so it was a little more cliche than a music festival but it was, it, it was like a, it was like a, it was like a Hollywood Hills. Like it was what I don't go to those <laughs> parties <laughs> I don't get and, and I usually try to stay away, but my buddy brought me to one a couple of years ago and that's where we first met and became friends. But we have gone to a couple, um, over the past like few months, I guess. Uh, and it's just hilarious. I mean, the, the type of people that you see at a music festival are all characters there. It's, it's, it's a really friendly environment. Um, but it's also very entertaining, you know, cause you got a guy who's like mid a middle-aged guy walking around in a leather thong. And then he's probably going back to work as a lawyer on Monday. So <laughs> it's just funny to see. <laughs> that makes me, you're selling it more and more to me. I'm really, <laughs> you got to find one. Yeah. 
is is there a good starter music festival to go to 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 kind of? I would say yeah. It, it the it depends on what type of music you're into and what the scene is like that you're into. You know, a Coachella or an Outside Lands. Um, and I'm no music festival expert, but you know, places like those are a little more mainstream. So they have a lot of artists that you recognize and a lot okay, of people okay. are there for the Instagram pick and not really for the music. Um, and then there's stuff like lightning in a bottle or, uh, uh, these, these other ones that are more like transformational music festivals mm -hmm. where the ethos is different. So like the way that the, the festival is ran is kind of like, uh, you know, um, there's recycling, there's compost, there's more of a, a family unity type of messaging in the marketing and in the layout of the festival and the signs and the, the um, there's just, more, it's more of like a, like a friendly family. I don't really know how to explain it. You got to go and really experience it because some, some festivals are just a straight up party and that's awesome. And people go to rage. And then other festivals are more for like spiritual growth and community growth and also have really dope music. But um, any, anyone you go to, you're going to have a good time. They're all really fun. If, as long as you're listening to music in the middle of nature, it's a, it's a good time. Oh man. That sounds like an absolute delight. That's yeah. it, it's, uh, well, I, I also wanted to ask, you know, speaking of spiritual growth and, uh, and, changing paths and this is a horrible transition but i'm just gonna commit yeah you, go for it. I, I know that <laughs> i know that you've been into sports a lot you were playing basketball since you were young and uh, yeah. you were actually playing d3 at uc santa cruz went to go play d1 at uc santa barbara ended up having a little mishap with the old ankle yeah and broke the ankle smash first day of practice it was, uh, yeah, so I was at Santa Cruz my first two years of school, and then I transferred to Santa Barbara um, right before my junior year, and I hit a little growth spurt, and I put in a lot of work over the summer because I really wanted to play D1, and I got down to Santa Barbara, and I was going through the whole tryout walk-on process, and I was doing really well, and um, the then we had a scrimmage at the end of the day. The day was full of drills and, and things like that. And then during the scrimmage at the end of the day, I, I came down and I fractured my ankle and that put me out for like three months. I was on crutches, um, but it kind of helped me divert my energy that I would have committed to being a part of the team, even as like a 12th man. Um, it helped me divert that energy into doing the student uh, newspaper, student radio station and working on more student films. So it, it was almost like, I guess, a blessing in disguise, you know, um, Obviously, I was super bummed at first. I was really sad. But, I, you know, without that injury happening, I might have just committed to being a bench player for the last two years of college and not realize my full passion for, like, creativity and creating stuff. So that's that's really cool. And, and I know that, yeah. like you said, you were in the, the newspaper. You also started, I believe, the, like, cam on camera interviews with some of the student athletes. Which yeah, yeah, yeah. That was then that became was really a fun. thing. Yeah, so I, I, I mean, the the original dream job was always Sports Center. That was always like, you know, yeah. which funny enough was also Will Ferrell's dream job. He wanted to be a, a sports anchor. Um, but yeah, Sports Center was always the goal. Even in college, I didn't know anything about stand up or comedy. I, I did a couple of like silly comedy videos just for fun. Um, but. I, I started doing these on-camera interviews with student athletes at UC Santa Barbara. I think there's two or three that are still online somewhere and they were fun, man. It was really cool. It was, I remember that whole process was about like just learning what a camera does. And, and at some point in college, I made my first comedy music video and I had my buddy edit it and I was literally over his shoulder. Like, Hey, no, that, can you move that over like two spaces and like move that back three and a quarter seconds. And I was talking in this weird language because I didn't know frames or frame rate or right. anything. And then when it was done, he said, okay, cool. I'm just going to color it. And I was like, what? And he was like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to color it. I'm going to do a color grade. And I was like, what do you mean? It's, it's already, it has color. It's not black and white. <laughs> like I didn't know that there's a whole other level to the shit. Right. 
And so right. uh, he just he was like, I mean, I guess if you don't want it. And I was like, no, just give me the video. And so I uploaded it. And then, of course, like the next thing we did together, he was like, hey, you need to let me color this. And then he showed me what a color pass does to a video. And it blew my mind, dude. I had no idea. Uh, and, and I remember that. And I remember feeling like, wow, there is so much to this world of like production and, and creativity in, in the digital video space that I don't know. And I just got so excited. And so now, of course, you know, I, I it, it's a, all that was like a curse in disguise because now I'm up until four o'clock in the morning fucking coloring shit on my own. Um, but it's, it's fun and it's really fulfilling. And, and those years at Santa Barbara were, I think, definitely set kind of the foundation for uh, sparking my creativity, I guess. That, that's super cool. Was that video Bike Path Love by chance? No, actually, it was, um, it was called Damn It Feels Good to Finish Finals. And it was a parody of Damn It Feels Good to Be a Gangster. And it, was, it is, I don't watch it. I, you can watch it. I will never watch it again because it's so cringy. And I was a junior in college and I put all my friends in it. Um, and it, I, like it's, I rap the whole time and it's like really bad. And like, you know, it's one of those first things you do where it's just cringy and flat, but, uh, it was really fun and it got pretty popular at the time. So. I mean, I did watch it and I thought it was delightful. I did leave a comment though. And I was like, if this was colored, it'd be better. <laughs> but That was you. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be, but to be honest though, I don't know what coloring is either. So that's a new term for me. Oh, really? Okay. Okay. Do you do any yeah. like video stuff or have you ever? So I've started to dive into video stuff with the podcast where I'll take these and I'll transform them into little clips and then I'll add to them and, and do some things like that. I've started to also do some skits with, with friends. I have a show now at, at a comedy club here in Phoenix and, cool. um, we started to do skits for it. So I've started to do the editing so that my friends will, or my business, I don't know who they are. These videographers will film them, then send me the footage. I'll splice it up and I haven't colored them, but I've added effects and things like that. So it's all been YouTube Academy for me, really. I feel that. That's how I learned stuff. I mean, I, I've been editing all my own stuff for years and I, I learned the whole process just on YouTube tutorials. I'm using, I am using Final Cut Pro. Is that a mistake? Because I saw on one of your stories too, you were like, I'm looking for people with, to help me. And I'm looking for Premiere uh, Adobe Premiere, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, Final Cut. I think Final Cut is a little bit more of the like consumer product. So it's it's a bit easier to use and it has a friendlier UI, a better user interface. Um, okay. Whereas Adobe okay. Premiere, you can do way more in Adobe Premiere, but it's a bit more of a challenge to tackle. It's definitely learnable and, and it's not, you don't have to be a genius to learn it. It'll just take a little more time and um, but if you come in with the fundamentals of Final Cut, then you'll be able to do it. It's also a little more like industry standard. And I know this is like super inside baseball nerd talk right no. now, but it, it's um, uh, Adobe Premiere is kind of industry standard. So I, I, I'm looking for an editor because I just I don't have the capacity to do a lot of the stuff that I want to do right now. And I need someone right. that has Premiere so that we can exchange the project file and work in like kind of collaboration with each other. Um, but either works. I mean, it depends on your goals too. If you're making silly short stuff, final cut is probably fine. You know? Yeah. Way to denigrate my work. I love that. <laughs> uh, if you're a little bitch, I mean, final cut. Is fine. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be a little bitch about it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. No, go ahead and use your little final cut. Yeah. It's fine. For those cute little clips yeah if you want to use final crap <laughs> uh, you know for the ma for the major leagues let's use uh premiere okay yeah call me oh, when you great. want to be an adult you know <laughs> <laughs> oh well brent this is a comedy <laughs> advice podcast so we're gonna get into some advice and i may have frozen or may have not you just you're intently listening. Sometimes I get confused. Okay, well, we're going to go into the advice portion. And I like to start us off with an inspirational 
quotes. I don't know if you're a quote guy, but I sometimes when I'm feeling down, when somebody just tells me that the years of work in Final Cut Pro that I've done amount to nothing, I like a nice inspirational quote to lift me up. <laughs> and so I'd like to ask my guests if they have any inspirational quotes to help lift them up when they're feeling down. So Brent, do you, are you a quote guy? Um, yeah, yeah, I am. I actually have a couple that I wrote down. Let me... <laughs> well, we just need one. We're just My a quote space. guy. Uh, let me see. Let me read you one of these because these are good. Or I'll, I'll just read you one because I don't, don't want to do too many. Uh, okay, okay. Yeah, just one, please, for time. Thank you. Just one for no, time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are these are these Brent Pella originals? Are they pel Pellisms? Uh, no, these are other people's that I just wrote down because I really liked them. But I actually haven't looked oh. at them in a good amount of time. So I think this will be, if I can find them. Let me see. People... I, I, I feel like if you do write inspirational quotes, Brent, I feel like you could definitely do uh, something off the net. Pell Pellisms? Pellets, perhaps? Yeah. You're like, nope, that's garbage. I don't take no, I advice like from a Final Cut Pro guy. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, okay. If I if I don't find it in the next like minute, I'm just gonna tell you one or two that are in my mind. Um, oh but, no, please these, speak so from the heart. All know? right. I mean, the one that I put uh, as my senior quote uh, in my senior yearbook was a kind of a classic cliche. Uh, Michael Jordan quote, which is you miss a hundred percent of the shots you don't take or no, that's Wayne Gretzky, that Wayne Gretzky and Michael Scott. Right. Yes. And Michael Scott. Uh, and then the, the Michael Jordan one was, um, uh, it's not whether you win or lose, it's how you play the game. But that quote was my senior yearbook quote. And at, and now I realize it is whether you win or lose because I have a very <laughs> unhealthy sense of competition. So how you play the game doesn't really fucking matter if you're walking out of there without the trophy, guys. Okay? So now I don't go by that one anymore. I go by the Kobe quote, which is uh, Shaq told this story. He said, you know, I, I looked at Kobe once. I said, there's no I in team. And Kobe was like, yeah, but there's an ME in that motherfucker. Oh! And that is a bit more... <laughs> I like, I love that because it's, it's, it, I mean, there's so much there it's, uh, but above, above and beyond anything, it's just the, the self-confidence that comes with saying something like that and the power I, behind, it. but it is whether you win or lose guys, it is, everything is about <laughs> winning and losing here. Okay. Don't be out there fucking trying to play the little game and doing your best <laughs> and then not winning. <laughs> See, that is is absolutely the type of person that I would expect to have a ferocious wolf right behind them on a right. painting. <laughs> right. I got to write that in Sharpie right here. <laughs> Just write the full that's, like, that's like the first Pella quote that yeah. I feel like should be emblazoned somewhere. Is It matters <laughs> whether you win or lose, guys. It doesn't, yeah, I'll put it on a it letterman doesn't... jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Well, hey, I feel pretty inspired. I'm I'm getting up Good. there. I want my cup to overfloweth. So I'm going to top off the cup with this inspirational quote that I have. It's actually, it's not by any human or basketball player um, at all. It's by a robot. And Ooh. the robot's name is Inspirobot. What well, it's, yeah, what it's meant to do, its sole purpose in life is to use AI to, to just reach into the depths of all of the texts made by man or quotes by Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, and Wayne Gretzky, and Michael Scott, and, and Brent Pella, perhaps, and it just mashes them together and creates an inspirational quote. Great. And you froze for three seconds that time. But I think I got the gist. I think I got the gist. I think Inspirobot creates an inspirational quote. Is that right? That's right. Yes, you got it. Okay, Brent, cool. Just that your wild and out experience being able to say things succinctly and then also to just squeeze the juice out of all the <laughs> shit someone's saying. Oh, man. I feel like I'm just throwing oranges at you and you're like, okay, juice, juice, juice. juice, juice you got it. Juice. <laughs> 
Oh man, such a such a great squeeze. All right, I'm gonna read this inspirational quote. Brent, you can tell me if it means anything to you. Okay, Inspirebot. Cool. Inspirebot says this week, love each and every party. That's it. That's that's all. Oh, really? <laughs> well, I mean, that is absolutely one of the greatest quotes of all time. Uh obviously there's I mean, the there the meaning that could be you know, drug out of that is, is tenfold. Uh, I would say that when Inspirabot is telling you to love each and every party, it's a multifaceted message that goes across all spectrums of life. Firstly, politically, you need to love all political parties. Okay. Stop hating each other. All right. We can get along. You don't get, you don't got to agree with all, all parties, but you gotta, you gotta love them all. You gotta love that they all exist right? Secondly, um, all birthday parties you go to, they're not all going to be fun. Some are going to have a weird cake that's a little too spongy and, and not as dense as you maybe would like it to be because they didn't use enough butter and they used too much flour. And so now it's a little more bready than it is cakey. Ugh. Hey, love Worst. that party too. Cause some people didn't get invited to that party, you know? Yeah. So uh, that- I think, I think there's a lot Dude, that's beautiful. So much juice. You, again, squeeze, squeeze. You just filled up the cup with orange Good juice. juice oh, man, just making juice. Also, I mean, you and your girlfriend met at a party at, that you said you usually don't go to those types of parties, but you loved that party. And now you're with a cherished uh, partner. So I feel yeah, well, like... Let's not give her too much, okay? This episode's about me, so... <laughs> I thought you were going to be like, well, we actually broke up last night. So (laughs) I, (laughs) oh, good. All right. Well, I thought there was a lot of wisdom. My cup Uh, froze again. Nine seconds. I lost you for nine seconds there. Oh my God. It it sounds like we have got such a good friendship that now we are just counting down the seconds in which we are not seeing each (laughs) other. God. (laughs) <laughs> the only thing keeping us apart is uh, my internet connection. That's great. All right, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna wind down with some questions now that we're nice and inspired. These uh, fans have either pulled them in or I've found them on the Reddit advice column. So we will cool. give give some wisdom or comedy or whatever. This is your episode, Brent. So whatever you want to do, don't let your girlfriend try and guide you on this one. No, it's, this is not for her, and she needs to stay out of this. I love the boundaries that we're setting. This is great. (laughs) First first question says, I got a job interview while I was really drunk in a bar. So a couple of weeks ago, I was out drinking with friends. Three men came and sat with us. The bar was pretty full. We got pretty drunk. And I get to talking about how I could use a side job next to going to uni. The drunkest of the men offers me a lunch two days later. Apparently, he's some sort of IT leader at the biggest company in my city. He asked me if I can code. I can't. He still wants to have lunch, though. How the hell do I prepare for a job interview at a huge company which I know nothing about? How do you prepare for a job interview where you're going to be bad at the job? I mean, can you fake it till you make it? Can you can you just see how far it'll go, you know? I don't know. I mean, coding is a whole other thing. That's like some hacker shit. That's I don't know anything that's, about that's... that world. But um I'd say probably, you know, it the the running theme to that story seems to be you were drunk, he was drunk, so it only makes sense to go to this job interview extremely drunk, um, <laughs> and you know hope for the best. I don't think there's any way around it. I think you got to <laughs> chug a bottle of Fireball before you go, wash it down with some milk, as one does. Oh, God. And show up to the job interview with or without pants is up to you and and try and align the vibe with this guy the same way it aligned when you were hammered. That's the I, only way. That seems like the only answer. I love that because in a lot of movies, people, something magical will happen and they'll try and recreate it and then they try and do the same thing that was happening. So I love right. the thought process of go to that lunch wasted and then obviously you're going to get the job. Because you're going to have that confidence. You're going to recreate it. So then you're going to have to go to work 
just drunk as fuck every single time, every day. So yeah. just prepare. Oh, just make sure that you negotiate for good health benefits because your liver is going to be a, a, <laughs> yeah. a crumpled little leaf in the fall. And yeah, so exactly get, get good health insurance out of it. And it's a win. That's all you there really you go. Because it doesn't matter how you play the game. You just got to win. Well, That's it, what it's it about. Does it, yeah, it's not whether you play the game well. It's whether you win or lose. That's the new quote. That's hilarious. That's so funny, dude. Oh, that's we the just, new we, <laughs> <laughs> we, re, we we redid it. Beautiful. All right. right well, <laughs> what a beautiful rebound of a quote that was. All right. Now, <laughs> go going on to the next segment. This is um it's kind of a new one just for you. It's a, a Pella Cut original and, you know, the best way to live life is to be your true authentic self. But it's really fun to do impressions. So I wanted to see and ask, because you do such a good Eminem, you do a great Joe Rogan, you do a, a bunch of different really good ones. I was going to ask, do you have any new ones bubbling up that you'd like to showcase or, or debut? Oh, man. Uh, I usually have a rule that I don't do impressions before noon. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that's a that, that's a great rule. I drink at like eight a.m., but I don't do impressions yeah. before noon. <laughs> I've, I've been well. The the ones that I've done or that I'm working on now are like um, I've already kind of done them. I've, I've been trying to do more of the Jake Paul because it, it, it's just so funny to to do that. The the whole like bro, dude. Yeah, I did. I'm a boxer, bro. <laughs> Bro, I'll beat your ass, dude. I don't care, dude. I'm a freaking boxer, dude. I'm different than any other boxer, bro. Because I only box people that are not boxers, bro. <laughs> that that's pretty fun. I'm looking at my board that's great. right now to see to see what other ones I have up there. Uh, I got to do a. I have a Joe Biden State of the Union bit that I'm writing right now. No way. You can do. Oh, I think I see. Have I seen a video of you doing Joe Biden, hey, or have you not done that? Oh man. Hey folks, listen. It's not whether you it's not whether you fit you swim or you or you go to the pool. It's how you that's how you have a change. It's how you put your it's how you drive in the lane. It's not whether you swim in the pool, it's how you drive in the lane. And when I was a boy, my daddy said, Joe, you're gonna drive so fast and then with your Ford, your new Ford Model T. That is Oh my God, that just made my freaking day. I So I wanted to say, I've got a couple impressions that I'm trying to workshop as well. I wanted to see cool. if we could do a little, a little uh, scenario where we do, let's say, Joe Biden or Jake Paul with the, the ones that I'm working on are Jason Statham and, nice. and Owen Wilson. For Jason Statham, it, I just have to like crumple the nose a little bit and the forehead. Let me see if I can. Oi. What's your name? Hey, hey, I'm Joey. You can call me Uncle Joey. Do you, would you like a towel to dry off? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, give me a towel. Because I just got out of a swimming pool. It was, but it, instead of water in the pool, it was full of vaccine liquid. Yeah, I saw it looks dangerous. There's a lot of points from vaccine there. A, a couple of vaccine at the bottom of the pool. Do yeah. you want me to go fish them out? Yeah, you fish them out, you Jason, Jason, Jason Momoa. You go fish them out, and you get all the little spiky spikes, and you tell everybody they got to put one off all the way up inside their little butthole. Hey, everybody, it's Owen. It's it's Owen Wilson. I heard that there was a lot of vaccine, and uh, I don't know. I, I wanted to test it on my dog first. I don't know. Are there any dogs here? Because I don't think it's safe for humans. Yet. Bro, I don't know bro, if Owen. Hey, man, all the stuff you're saying right now just sounds like a freaking challenge, bro. I'll break your nose off. I'll turn that shit into an NFT, dude. I'll sell it for 18,000 Ethereum, dude. I'll break your nose. I'll turn I, it into a hat. I'll put it on your head, and I'll steal it, dude. I got your hat, dude. <laughs> hey, man, I'm all about fighting, but my doctor said I can't do it because my nose is literally going to fall off if I do <laughs> one more fight. So Sounds like something a bitch would say, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, do you use Final Cut Pro or do you use <laughs> Adobe? <Pro? laughs> 
That's a pretty good um, and, and Owen, dude. Those are both. Oh, really thank, good. thank you, man. Thank you, and that's a great Jake Paul and Joe Biden. God damn, beautiful, <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. All right. Well, now, now, now that we've, I feel like I've been in your shoes. I feel like I've been a little bit in Joe Biden's. I don't know what type of shoes he would wear. Oh, Loafers. The, yeah. <laughs> Crocs. He probably just wears Crocs. It's Definitely just more comfortable. Crocs. Yeah, <laughs> um, I feel like this has been, despite the internet connection, a fantastic episode. So, Brent, I just wanted to give you a huge thank you oh, for dude, being on absolutely. the show. Yeah, thank you for having me, man. Absolutely. And I wanted to ask, you know, what have you got going on? You're going to be in Phoenix on in October. So, and yeah. you've got some other dates. Where can people follow you? What have you got going on? So I have my own show. I'm running my full hour at the Tempe Improv on Thursday, October 7th. So anybody that's in the Phoenix, Tempe, Arizona area, please come through. I'm trying to pack it out as best I can. It's a, I know it's a Thursday, so it's kind of a weird day. But it's one of those things where if I could you know, prove that people like me, they'll bring me back for a full weekend. Um, so I'll be there Thursday, October 7th. Come check it out. Uh, Brentpella.com slash shows for tickets or Tempe improv website. Uh, and then new videos come out on Instagram and YouTube all the time. And everybody can follow me on Instagram. It's at Jake Paul is my Instagram. So go ahead and follow me there. <laughs> and I'll really be beautiful Brett. And guess what guys, it's not, it's not that hard. Cause it's going to be in the show notes too. Cause you, you can just take your hammy little thumbs and just click <laughs> on there and buy tickets. So I don't know why I'm being stern to you listeners. Cause you guys are listening. So <laughs> little tough they love need to there. learn well hey there again cuties it's me future stefan from the episode and that was amazing i really enjoyed it i hope you guys did too and if you want some more if you're still craving more brent go follow him watch him on his instagram page or youtube and go see him live october 7th at the tempe improv link is in the show notes so go do that and while you're at it don't forget to buy tickets for the Trash or Treasure Show October 19th with me and my co-host, Lamar Mitchell JR. Subscribe, follow me on YouTube, follow me, well, subscribe on YouTube, follow me on Instagram, and join the Facebook group. Join in the fun. Next Thursday, 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern time. Man, I feel, I'm not fluent yet in that promotion, so I'm really stumbling across that. 6 p.m. And soon I'm going to be like 6 p.m. Pacific time and 9 p.m. Eastern time. Wow, look, I did it. Look at me. Good for me. All right, guys. I hope you guys accomplished something today, too. I hope you guys got your hair just right. Or maybe you just looked in the mirror and you had that little glint in your eyes that made the whole face just beam. Let me know. You know, let me know well, your small wins, because that's really what's important. You know, it's it's what helps us win those bigger battles, those small wins. So I hope you guys had something good happen today or you accomplished something good today. Let me know about it so I can give you a good job, a round of applause, a pat on the old back. All right, guys, that's all. Love y'all. Big old gooch smooch. Ciao.